behind this then is another set of fundamental changes. So I want to talk now about learner engagement and actually learner motivation, the question of motivation. And again, I want to make this counterpoint with traditional learning. So we always thought, ideally, what a wonderful utopian world would be where learners learnt for the good of knowledge and because they loved learning. And well, that was naive because in fact, what the system by and large rewarded was um, what was assessed um, in it at the end of the day. You got a grade for things and so on. And it was the fact you got an A or a B or a C or an F. That was the only real system of motivation. And really it was about playing the system of numbers and getting good scores um, uh, along the way. And in a way, the, the motivational structure of traditional learning is what, around what I would call institutional rewards. Now, the interesting question is, in terms of those older ideals about the love of learning, is how can we build a world where, um, where there are not these extrinsic motivations, which is institutional rewards, but intrinsic motivations in the actual work that you're doing. In other words, I'm doing, it's, it's really fun to do this Volcanoes project because here I am, I'm building this report up and it's looking really great and it's really interesting. But also part of the intrinsic motivation will be, well look, my peers are gonna look at this and I want it to be good. And when it's finished, it will be published to a web portfolio and we're going to have a whole class where every member of the class has studied a different volcano around the world and we're going to present on that to the class. So in a sense, um, it's actually thinking about intrinsic motivations which are both around the aesthetics of production. What a beautiful report. It's got videos and diagrams and whatever. The aesthetics of production, but also um, uh, the social mutuality of it, which is giving and getting feedback displaying what you do to the class, everybody's seeing it in a kind of a web space in the web portfolio. So a kind of pride around producing this particular artifact. That's what we call intrinsic motivations. Now, how does that align with the new media world that's all around us at the moment? Well, you know, what keeps people in Facebook? What keeps people tweeting? Well, the answer is these are sites which are based on deep forms of reciprocity. So when I read a newspaper, no reciprocity. I'm just getting something out of it. When I uh, watch a piece of television, watch the news, watch a sitcom, um, there's no reciprocity involved except, you know, kind of uh, vicarious reciprocity, which is I relate to something. Okay, um, but in these environments, there's what's um, often called a kind of stickiness, a social stickiness. Um, I read a very um, interesting article about uh, Twitter. Uh, a very thoughtful article about Twitter, where um, it's about um, a, a, a lot of Twitter posts are actually about affirmation. So, um, or tw tweets are about actually about affirmation. So the way in which you build a series of followers is by following, right? The way in Facebook um, you get more friends is by, or, or the way in which you sustain relationships is by liking. You can't not like things. That's not an option. So. Um, one of the interesting things about these new media spaces is there's a lot of reciprocity going on, but the, the reciprocity which works best is affirmative reciprocity. You like in order to be liked. You follow in order to be followed. Now, take that now into these uh, learning environments, is, is can we build motivational structures around these affirmative things? You love getting these constructive evaluations. I know in our research, the kids are dying to find out what the other kids think of their work. And then they're so proud of what they finally produce, which gets produced to the web as a, a beautiful web artifact in their portfolio. So we've got those intrinsic motivations, which are both, again, to summarize, around the aesthetics of production, that's one issue, and around the mutuality and the sociability of the whole environment. Now, you know, these are things which, you know, the traditional essay wasn't a very aesthetic thing and you hand it in just to the teacher who was an audience of one. Um, so in other words, w what we're hoping is that by building these environments, we can build environments which are deeply about collaborative intelligence, working together, collective engagement, deeply about those things and relevant to the 21st century and exciting uh, for having those particular qualities to them. So what are the consequences of uh 
uh, these possibilities, these affordances in the digital e ecology. Certainly one of the things that happens within it is something we call the help economy. Uh, and in the help economy, all members of a particular community cohort or class, their purpose is to ensure that the outcome is something they can all feel represents uh, what they want to contribute and what the task is required. So it does lift the level of performance for all members in the classroom. Uh, digital ecologies are also very transparent spaces. Uh, all members can see what's happening, see who contributed. Uh, they, they have the capacity of building uh, co cohesion among uh, the uh, learners who are participating there and they also have the capacity for building very, very strong knowledge that benefits the individual and the group.